Hi, my name is James Williams. I'm a developer relations engineer for Dart and Flutter. A common question I hear from developers is if choosing Flutter means they will have to start completely from scratch. I'm happy to tell you that's not the case. Your Flutter apps can make the most of the intersection between bespoke Flutter features, native platform APIs, and UI, all from the comfy confines of your Dart code base. Let's talk a little bit about how the architecture of Flutter makes this possible. As you may already know, Flutter is Google's cross-platform application framework that allows you to create applications targeting a number of platforms, from the web to mobile to desktop. Flutter is organized as a layered system with the component layers building on the ones below them. We playfully call this diagram the Flutter architecture layer cake. In brief, the framework layer provides high-level reusable APIs in Dart for things like common widgets, gestures, accessibility, and text input. The engine, implemented in C and C++, is more low-level. It works with them better and is responsible for, amongst other things, some messaging between the native platform and Flutter. Closest to the host platform, the embedder is the entry point from the host system to a Flutter app. This is the one layer out of the three whose implementation is unique to the host platform and will be written in the languages that make the most sense for that platform. The code implementing the framework and engine layers is shared between all Flutter implementations. The work we'll be doing today touches all three. So let's begin with native interop, Dart code that will interface with native libraries from our Flutter layer cake. This work is mostly in the engine layer. This is a useful tool in your toolbox, but not one that you'll likely be using often. To add access to native platform features or libraries, we have a couple different options. Method channels and our platform-specific code generation options, JNIGen and FFIGen. Let's talk about them briefly. Method channels, sometimes described as platform channels in our documentation, work by creating a named passageway from your Dart code to call platform code. What actually happens is you set up a listener on the native side that monitors for a named method call, executes code, and then passes back a result. This can sometimes be unwieldy for a couple of reasons. Firstly, it's your responsibility to make sure the message is type safe and properly conforms to what your Dart code expects. Second, it may become overwhelming for complex objects or if you're deploying to platforms with disparate implementations of the same feature. Third, because you're making method calls in two places, you'll have more maintenance work when APIs change. The pigeon package is our solution to reduce the overhead of managing that platform channel code. It also provides some cross-platform code generation capabilities to make platform channels easier. The technique for native interop that we'll be focusing on instead for this first section of the talk is JNIGen. JNIGen generates code for use with the Java native interface, a specification provided by the Java programming language. JNI allows Dart to directly call and execute code through Dart in native C and C++ bindings. This method of code generation is not limited to Java and Kotlin. FFIGen foreign function interface exists for use on iOS and other platforms. Some configuration details may differ, but most of the concepts carry over. In fact, JNIGen uses FFIGen under the covers to generate C bindings to call Java code. So let's look at a discrete example. Health Connect by Android is a library and app allowing a user to track their health information and vitals, controlling which applications have access to them. Like many people, I recently became more concerned about my health and wanted to take steps to better track it to assist my healthcare team. With this small tracking app, I can log blood pressure for a given date and time, allowing medical care professionals to interpret the historical data, giving my doctor a more complete picture of what's happening the 363 days of the year when I'm not in his office. Health Connect, however, doesn't publish a native Dart library. So we will be using JNIGen to generate our Dart binding code. Let's talk about what we need to do to get started. First, we need to add JNI and JNIGen packages 
to our project and run their setup tasks. Those tasks will retrieve native libraries to run Java code and the JNIGen app summarizer that helps translate Java code into a syntax tree that can then be converted into Dart. The full feature set of a JNIGen.yaml file is beyond the scope of our exercise today, but at minimum, it needs to answer three questions. What classes should have generated bindings? Where is the source or compiled code for those classes located? Where do we want to store the generated binding classes? Here is our full jnigen.yaml file. Let's break it up piece by piece. Starting with our first question, the classes directive accepts a list of qualified class paths for the classes we would like to use. On to the second question of where the source is stored, we have a couple options. JNIGen has support for libraries distributed on Maven Central or Google's Maven repositories. Similar to Dart's pub.dev, Maven repositories store build artifacts, both source and compiled code for the build system used by Android. Paths listed under Maven underscore downloads will be downloaded from either of these locations. Alternatively, JNIGen can retrieve dependencies from your Android build files. The output directive tells JNIGen where to store the generated classes. In this case, it will be in a directory named health underscore connect with inner classes and packages matching the specified classes. After sorting our JNIGen.yaml file, we can finally generate the Dart bindings with this line of code. Here's a recap of the full flow of commands we have to enter. So we're done, right? Not quite. The code generated by JNIGen is Dart, but it's unlike most Dart you've ever seen. Here's a quick preview of it. Part of that discrepancy is from the fact that JNI uses its native interface to locate a pointer to the Java environment in memory and executes code using that pointer. This is what's happening behind the scenes when you execute JNI or FFI gen code. This diagram looks more imposing than it is in practice because you'll generally be working with regular Dart or first-level bindings. The other factor is that in that generation process, it tries to account for features from Java that don't exist in Dart. Java and Kotlin allow method overloading. That's to say a given class can have multiple methods with the same identifier as long as the parameters list is different, either in type or in number. Dart doesn't support this. To compensate, JNIGen uses a numbered suffix to support methods with the same name. Health permission has overloaded git read permission, so the second iteration is suffix with dollar sign one. Generic information is also enforced a little bit differently. It will sometimes require an extra explicit parameter with the object type. In general, for every Java or Kotlin class, several JNIGen classes will be generated a class containing the main logic, a class containing the containerized type information, a class allowing for a nullable type, and the above for any inner classes. For example, these are generated from health permission. Let's look at an example using JNI gen code. In this code to insert a blood pressure record, it's mostly imperceptible from Dart code. In fact, only BP record in git zone offset originated as Dart code. We have two small JNIGen artifacts, the metadata.manualentry function call, which has a dollar sign two suffix on it, and the coercion of a list into a typed J list. We can freely mix types from Dart and JNIGen. Health Connect's records needs time zone offsets to be properly stored. So in the get zone offset function, it takes a current Dart date time, retrieves the time zone offset, and uses that to create a Java zone offset object. We can also add extension methods to Dart that make use of Java objects. In this code to retrieve records, we have some minor JNIGen artifacts as well. Beyond the cast to a collection that we've seen before, there's some lookup for type information. This is the original tutorial code that I converted it from. The verbosity in the Dart version comes from the fact that JNIGen doesn't translate default parameter information at this time. 
And here is the app running again. With JNI Gen, you can stay in the flow state, writing Dart code without the need to constantly flip back and forth. In JNI Gen, you aren't limited by what has already been provided by the Dart or Flutter teams. You can use native APIs on day one. You can easily translate snippets from native code samples into Dart. Though I use an Android API in my example, these same capabilities are possible on iOS as well through FFI Gen. I hope you consider JNI Gen as a valuable part of your toolbox. Returning back to our architecture diagram, the next area we'll talk about, platform views, uses code in the framework and embedder layers. Platform views give us a means to embed a component from iOS or Android when there isn't a Flutter version. Perhaps the view or widget is totally new, or something you've already developed in native code and aren't ready to migrate. In either case, you can leverage native views to speed up your adoption of Flutter. So let's work through an example in practice. Keeping with the health theme, I whipped up this Swift component to track some activity metrics. So how do I get from this to this? To use a native view, I have to do a little bit of setup both in Flutter and in native code. You can include a component directly in your app, but it's best to package it as a plugin. Using a plugin will promote reuse and hide implementation details from end-user developers. The first thing Flutter needs is a wrapper component that it can use to call the native view. This will be a widget that's called directly in your app. One key difference with this code and run-of-the-mill Flutter code is a call to UIKit view. UIKit view encapsulates an iOS component, given a developer-defined string for the view type and creation parameters. The view type is a name the platform code will use to map this request to the native implementation. So it can be anything you want it to be, as long as it's unique to the native components in this app or in this plugin. The embedder layer is where we need to make the connections between Flutter and the host system. As a result, our work will be in native code. The Flutter Embedder needs some helpers to understand which native view to create per the request from UIKit view. Here's the widget in question running in a Swift playground. For each native component we want to implement, we need some additional classes. A factory that will take the parameters dispatched from UIKit view to create the component. And for every native view, we need a class wrapping the actual implementation decorate it with a Flutter platform view interface so that it can be embedded. Lastly, we need to register the view factory with the plugin. Again, the idea is the view type that we selected previously. And since we're using a plugin for implementation, we need to include that in our pubspec.yaml in our app. So the fact that it came from Swift UI isn't immediately apparent as it's called the same way as any other Flutter widget. And here's how all of that works together. Let's talk a little bit about the performance of platform views. Using platform views will result in a performance cost, so it should be used thoughtfully and sparingly. Let's talk a little bit about why. So typically, the UI for a Flutter app uses a dedicated thread for its drawing calls. When you use a platform view, it engages the main platform thread for drawing, so that can impede other essential tasks like OS or plugin messages. But don't let this deter you from using a platform view if you need to use one. Simply exercise care. In our short time together, you've learned that Flutter can be both cross-platform and at the same time give you specificity and access to target platform features, UIs, and APIs. We've outlined the various ways to interact with native code. We've walked through in detail how you can generate Dart bindings for a native library with JNI Gen. And lastly, how to integrate a native platform view into a Flutter app alongside Flutter components. You won't need to interact with these capabilities to get the large part of your work done from day to day, but they're there waiting for you when you need them. Thank you for watching.